Now today in the shop we dealt with some really bad weather that didn't didn't make our choices uh, easy in the beginning but we finally got settled in and we finished up and it's ready to mount now I finished up the MT-09 front wheel it could not have come out any better I was really pleased with the way it worked out I tried to share some good information about mounting tires some of the ways that I've done it and I, I demoed two of them on this on this video one is at the end and for anybody that has never seen the only think the only way you can mount tires is with a tire machine well this may give them some food for thought or and I know some some people are looking to save the money anyway and it just seems like the price goes up every time you go get a tire changed anyway this is how I've done it one of the ways I've done it over the years and I got the discs on I got the other peripheral stuff ready and this wheel now the next day we get to work on it this wheel is ready to mount now today is the day we waited for we should be able to finish up the front wheel today I don't know about getting it installed and I, I know we're not going to get a photo shoot because it's snowing out there it's supposed to snow all day but warm up in the next couple of days so maybe we'll save the photo shoot for that I wanted to to do that and I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to get the wheel I'll get it finished today get the tire mounted and get it ready but and if I do have some extra time because we're in the middle of this moving things around by the kids house and if they basically uh, don't have a kitchen anymore so if I do get the time I'll get the front wheel on make it shoot some photos here in the garage but the project then that we will be at the halfway point on the wheel and then of course start on the back one and one of the nice things is every one of these wheels is a different adventure they're all out on a channel we try to post something up every day every day we don't get snowed in every one of them is just a little different a little bit of a different adventure and on the ones now in the first one I mixed the gold paint from scratch that worked out great this one I did this experimental four to one paint that's on a previous video and it looks like it's working out way better than I could have ever dreamed so there's a couple little areas I still have to work on on that wheel and then we'll be ready to mount the tire and discs and everything and see how the day is going to play out and of course as I'm out here flipping battery chargers in the morning keeping these lithium-ion batteries all topped off and ready I, because you never know when the weather's going to break and I just looked at the, the long term weather we are supposed to get some days where it's going to be in the 40s before this week is out kind of excited about sneaking out for a day even if I guess got a, a less than a hundred mile ride just to get some time but that's a whole nother video that's a whole nother time today we want to finish that MT-09 front wheel and boy it would even be nice to sneak out on the RD if we could get a break in the weather anything anything just just to get some riding time that would hold me like a drug addict who needs a fix and we got the installation hardware and bolts and tools all set all we're waiting for is to get that wheel finished I think we'll get it done today oh it's so pretty when it snows it's unbelievable but I had thought maybe I'd get some painting done today and you can bet that's not gonna happen so this is what it looks like it's a wintry mix of snow and rain and it's supposed to go all day so it's something we have to deal with every day the on the ongoing adventure of weather so we had two choices today we could finish up the MT-09 wheel or paint I don't think we're gonna paint today uh, when it first snows everything is so beautiful truly a day for some extra coffee it is it's cold and it's snowing Well, we spent a lot of time buffing this out yesterday wow now there are a couple of spots I still want to address and it's always good by the way to come back the day after and look around and see if there's any spot you missed but one of the things I left and it's, it's just me I like to lay the wheel flat when I do the spoke edges I need to take this out of the stand so it's it's time to go to work today now because it's below freezing I hung the tire that we're going to mount up by the heating vent not sure how much how good that's going to uh, how much that's going to help but the whole the whole objective anytime you mount a tire whether you use a machine spoons or the duct tape method get the tire warm your whole thing is the tire has to be warm now one of the things that's really important no matter what you do in a restoration or maybe in life in general is to do things in sequence never get the horse before the cart and I'll explain what happened to me one time I, I know I, I know this is on a video somewhere in the channel but it's it's really funny that it happened 
not funny for me, it ruined the whole day. I mounted up the tire and I was talking on video and Karen was bringing me down coffee and I, Miles was running around here doing things. People were coming over the house and I'm all done, I had the tire mounted. And I said, okay, now it's time to put the valve in. Well, <laughs> needless to say, sequencing didn't work out that day. Anyway, I want to thank Pokey who donated this. We're going to clean this all up before we go and do the back wheel, of course. Start with a clean, a clean stand. That stand has worked well for so long. But I wanted to get the wheel, and I want to see which side I want to have to do first. Uh, I may as well do this side first. It doesn't really matter. I want to get the spokes. I've got to do them by hand. I want to just very lightly sand them with some 2000 grit, buff them out by hand. And we'll be ready then to take the back masking off, mount the valve. See, the, but the first time you do it, it's a good idea if you're not familiar with doing this. If you haven't done it, obviously watch a couple of videos, some other people's videos too. We try on every time I make a video to do it a different way. Mount the tire this way, that way. The only thing, I don't have a tire machine. I got no place to put a tire machine. It'd be like having an extra washing machine in the house. And I do like the fact that every time I do this, I try to improvise and be cute about it anyway. But... This really came out, I, I, I'm so happy the way this paint worked out. Now the whole objective of what we're going to do is to get the tire on without chewing up the paint, scratching it, putting a chip in it. And let's see if we can do it that today. Now as I'm taking a tin foil and cleaning up the wheel balancer, this is a good tip. This, see this is, if you don't put some duct tape or something on the bottom of this, there's, these edges are really sharp and what happens, they... If, when you have the tin foil on there, it tends to tear the tin foil up. So I took a, a file and just radiused all this stuff off, and I put some some of that. Well, this is just ordinary gorilla tape, duct tape, whatever. Just just to, so I don't have any razor edges on that while I'm working on things, and that works out well. This I can just run on the, and it, it always gets to show it some paint on it. Run it on the wire wheel, cleans it right up, and then we're going to be ready for the next job. Now it's just me. I like to keep the tools clean. I don't like to have paint dust, paint grit on anything. Just I like to work like like it's a uh, professional operation here, even though I really am a backyard mechanic. And I like to have clean tools all the time. Now all the other parts for this job are prepped up. So the first thing that just goes on the sequencing is very important is I want to finish that buffing out before I do anything. That's a small job, but it'll be a lot easier to do it, or it'll be possible to do it when the discs aren't on. The same thing before I mount the wheel back on a bike, I'll run the buffing wheel on the exhaust pipes, because with the wheel out of the way, getting in at the front of the exhaust pipes is a piece of cake. So while the tire's heating up, I figured I'd do some email, and I got a great email from Scott. Scott sent me this great little video about a guy with a water buffalo, and I wanted to show him. Maybe he never has seen this. This is my water buffalo. This is 1972, and you can see the, uh, that's the school I went to in the back. <laughs> and I keep a copy of the magazine. This was on a cover of two magazines, and this, my, this was way ahead of its time. Not many people had that kind of a bike back then, but I keep that right on a workbench. Just to remind me that when you have a passion for things, you just pay the price and you'll have them every time. But paying a price is really a problem sometimes. And there's a picture of my, <laughs> my uh, Macaw. And there's the bike in my driveway. That was pretty, pretty good memories. But I like having these memories all over the wall. People have sent me stuff and the little models of things. And it's just, hey, it's the story of my life. And if you think I don't have a big ego trip, here's the magazine, the real magazine that that was on. And here's the second magazine. I was actually on two magazine covers because that bike really was way ahead of its time. It was really, I, I'm surprised. I, I didn't know that it was going to be this popular, but uh, it was. And how different it is from modern bikes. Modern bikes are so good. Everything works. Oh, my God. Back in the day, not so much. And actually, it was Chris who found the magazine, and I made this thing for my bathroom here. And she found the magazine. Chris, I still have it. I still treasure it. And it's in an appropriate place in my bathroom. 
Now, the reason I didn't do this yesterday, first I ran out of time, was number one. But I, I thought it would be easier. I put multiple towels down here so this would be soft. I don't want to chew up the finish. And I'll do one of these at a time. It's not a real high-tech big thing. This will be very easy to do. Take 10, 15 minutes, but this will just add a nice little touch to it. It's just one of the little details, and I think all of custom motorcycling is about the details. And it smooths right out in a matter of about a minute. So we have 20 of them to do. And then we'll buff them out by hand. And be ready to take all the back masking off. Now what makes this all practical for me is I like my MT-09 so much. The performance meets the way I like to ride and how I like to ride and having the safety features on it. And then the biggest one of all, <laughs> the fact that Karen got it for me for my birthday, it means I'm never going to sell this bike for sure. And as I usually do, I always depend on 4CR to basically do any hand buffing. This is good with a machine, but it's even better by hand. Now, as I buff these parts by hand, the, the color on the fluorescent lights is a little muted, but I haven't really been able to get it out in the sun. This one, I've had the other wheel out in the sun, and it looked great against the blue, the Yamaha Racing Blue. And I'm really looking forward to it, but the weather did not cooperate today. Now the next step is to remove all the back masking parts. Make sure they're clean. Very carefully remove it. I don't want to put any scratches in the paint. Now I'm always real delicate and careful when I'm pulling off back masking because where the back mask, the tape ends, and the paint begins, if you start pulling up the paint, ugh, it, it, it just makes you crazy. But I really did this meticulously with a brand new razor blade. Really didn't miss any spots. Anywhere where the two parts are going to join, I scraped them, made sure we're on metal to metal. There isn't a big glob of paint or tape or something in there. And it just takes a lot of time, but it's worth doing. Now, it's always right at the end of the job, pulling the back mask off very carefully that you don't pull up an edge of paint, cleaning up the edges, and... We're going to be ready to mount the tire soon. And the snow never stopped. We didn't lose a day today of, a, of anything. At least in that, it's not enough snow to even plow, so that's in our favor. Getting rid of this, always, it takes longer than you think it does and to clean up all these edges and everything, so everything fits together nice. Okay, so the last thing here is to pull out our bolt where the curvy girl goes. Put this back. This worked out great again. And we're ready to put the curvy girl in. Now, these are the curvy girls that I've used many, many years. Julie down at Curvy Girl in Texas. If you speak to her, she'll tell you the right one to get. They come two different sizes. The couple of tricks to do is don't over tighten them and don't use Loctite. So what I did, I had to do this for several wheels. I don't know about the MT-09. Is grind down some of the wrench to get into that area. Because I don't want to put these on overly tight. They're just hand tight and just a little bit more. And that's it. Now the Curvy Girls are a really tight fit. And they seal on the side, not on the top. So you want to really be careful. It's a really tight fit to get these started in there. I don't want to have it crooked when I tighten the nut. There we go. Have it just the way it should be. And the only thing you can do that's bad here is over tighten them. And if you over tighten them, it's time to order more. Now I'm always careful to make sure it seats just the way it should. I like to have it on the side opposite the kickstand because as the bike is leaning, that's the way it's easier to check it. And I pretty much check the tire pressure every time I ride the bike. So this makes it very, very convenient. Now, when I say that's hand tight, I just, yeah, I don't want to make it any tighter than that. That's plenty tight. And it's sealed nice, nice and straight. And if you call down a curvy girl, tell them, you know, Wendy, maybe you'll get one of those free t-shirts that I got. <laughs> I guess you got to buy a hundred valves or something. But they're nice people, Danny. Julie is very nice. Okay, that worked out great. This makes it very convenient to check the air. And if you're like me and you check the air often, or every time you ride the bike. This really pays for itself very quickly. And the first time you don't check the air and you start wobbling around, there you go. 
Now, as I said before, there's a lot of ways to mount tires. A tire machine works great, of course, if you have room and you have one or access to one. It's nice, but the thing I like to do, and it's because I'm very old school about this, I've tried to mount tires and dismount tires without scratching the rim. That's the primary thing, and it takes, it takes a little practice. But here's the biggest thing. This, I've used this. This came, by the way, from the late Bob Navola. Thank you, Bob. And he noticed I was mounting some tires for him, and I was using Dawn. And he said, oh, no, this works better. This works better. Well, I didn't find it worked a whole lot better, but it, as long as we have it, <laughs> we may as well use it. And again, no more tire mountain lubricant. You only need to do one side. You don't have to do both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to heat the tire. Heating the tire is the biggest job of all. So basically, it's only the side of the wheel that you're going to mount the tire from. We're going to mount it from this side. And in reality, you really only have to go the top half. But here's the big thing that it's getting that tire hot. That's the big thing. Boy, if you only knew on a, if this were a summer day and it were 80 degrees outside, I know I met with Glenn and I were mounting tires on his Ducati one day and I almost got killed. I went to push them on and holy mackerel, they were so hot. They jumped on. I don't even think you needed the tape. Anyway, we're going to try the uh, Gorilla Tape method. It's, it's on my channel if you do my name in quotation marks and the word wheels, tire mounting. I don't know what it's under, but anyway, this is only to one side. We're going to mount it from this side. And let's see how this works out. So now these are tires I got from Vlad. Recently he hand delivered them and I'm looking for because I, I've noticed something. Now, and I just wanted to mention this. Some tires come without a red dot. And when you check the Michelin website, they say their tires, if they need a red dot, they reject them. And to be honest, I found that to be true. I haven't had to do a lot uh, the ones I, the original set I put on a bike balanced up pretty good, but you never know that for sure. I noticed there are no red dots on this tire, and this this was made only six months ago, so it's a fresh, nice, soft tire. And I want to make sure I'm mounting it with the correct rotation. In my mind, I have it. It's got to go this way. I see the rotation marks. Um, I want to get. Uh, well, since there's no red dot, I guess I've <laughs> there's not much to do. I can't make it a lot warmer than, it's 65 degrees in here right now. And I doubt I'm going to get it much warmer, but I'm going to give it a try without warming it up anymore. And then if that doesn't work, i got to bring in my, my quartz heater from the garage and warm it some more. But let, let's just see if it's our lucky day. Now, in the past, I've done tires every possible way that I know of, including over at Luciano's with the machine. But this is a way that I've done in the past that's worked pretty well. But, but again, the whole trick is get the tire warm it that no matter how you mount it a warm tire especially taking it off or putting it on it really works in your favor so no matter what method you use and this method seems to work pretty well for me i'm going to detail it this is gorilla tape i need to put four pieces in and that the whole idea is don't get any down into the where it's going to mount up against the rim get get a good bond here and this is this is kind of the way that's worked pretty well for me. Now, when a tire is soft, of course, it's a lot easier than when it's hard like this. So, number one, if you can warm the tire up, boy, is that in your advantage. That is a giant advantage. Anyway, of course, get the tire rotation correct. Now, you, to Michelin's shame, they put the tire rotation on one side of the tire, and it's always the side that you don't want to use, but you can write with a marker on it or whatever, but this is by just putting your weight on it and because we don't have access to a 90 degree day, this may take two or three times to get it because I have to warm the tire up or some other way of warming it. I put it by heating vent, but it's probably not much more than 65 degrees because it just it's not a real efficient way of doing it. And once you get this down, and we'll put some lube on it and we'll see if it's our lucky day. And if it isn't, we gotta find some way of heating the tire some more. Or of course you could always use spoons to get it to find a little bit. It's, it's not a contest. If the tire gets on without scratching the rim, 
I'm happy. Of course, when you get the tape off, the most important thing is don't leave any down in the bead. Sometimes it comes off in one piece, but check that the bead, you don't have any in there. And sometimes it's your lucky day, and because the bead just snapped, we got to get in there. And get that out. And it's Gorilla Tape, not duct tape. But it's always important to get that piece out. The whole One thing is for sure, every brand of tire is a little bit different. The Dunlops, they have a hard carcass. They seem to be a little bit more difficult to mount using this method. And the Michelin seem to be the easiest. And these, well, you just saw in real life. They're relatively easy, and if you can get them warm, especially when you take them on and off, big help. Now for that magic pop. Come on, kids. Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on. You can do it. Yay! Okay, once that air is down, we can put the valve back in. Now, my, my plan is always, and, and today will be no exception, I always like to put in a given amount of pressure, usually 50 PSI. Let the tire sit overnight and then check the pressure and make with the same gauge and make sure it's exactly the same in the morning before I mount the tire. Since we don't have enough time to mount this today, we will definitely get it all ready. In fact, we'll see if it balances, get the discs on. But I want to have it sit overnight. Now, if we're in the summer, eh, maybe I take a chance because I want to ride tomorrow. I, I'm probably not going to ride for a while. Now the next step is the leak test. It's been sitting here for a few minutes while I had a cup of coffee. I want to fill a bead with Windex. And this of course is overkill. This is old school. I have seen a lot of people not do this and skip the step. And three days later you go out to the garage and the bike has about four pounds less air and then six pounds less. This is always cheap insurance. Now, if, if you have a bad bead, <coughs> Or in the case of using the Gorilla Tape, if you leave a little piece of tape around a bead inadvertently, you probably this is what will happen. You'll see bubbles. Now we'll do both sides. I don't see any bubbles here so far. And usually you see them right away. But being able to leave it overnight with 50 pounds of air and then I can put the air that I'm going to use in the bike when I put it on a bike, which will probably be tomorrow if we don't get snowed in here. It's still snowing. Oh yeah, that looks great. Okay, now when I get to that point, easy peasy, we'll flip it over and do the other side. And we'll be ready to mount up the hardware. This was this was a relatively easy one. And you know, some of them are like I said, that the some of the Dunlops, this bike came with Dunlops, and, and to put to take them on and off, the carcass is very hard. Tires are not all exactly the same, needless to say. And I remember some of the Metzlers, I had Metzler track day tires on the FZR, but getting them on and off, holy mackerel, they were, was a, it was a lot of work. But I think the part of it is I just couldn't get them hot enough. Getting a tire, this tire was not more than 65 degrees, so you could figure out <laughs> if you can get it to 80, you may not even need the tape. So it might be our lucky day. We got a perfect bead seal the first the first shot. The tire went on on the first shot. Amazing. It, and I, as I always say, some days it is your lucky day, and some days it's <laughs> it's not. Now this is the next step, and I had a little concern about this when I painted it. It was a little shiny, so I hit it with 2,000 grit paper to make it replicate the finish of the original one before the, the finish was uh, had some gouges in it. But anyway, I wanted to polish up the bolts. These came with some kind of yellow Loctite. I don't know if that's... I have blue Loctite when I put it back together. And these, you do need that special wrench for these. It's not an Allen wrench. Luckily, I have that wrench. But And again, I will Loctite these in with the blue Loctite and, and be very careful not to strip them. These are, these are parts that, have, that are precision. And from what I understand, and people have explained to me, 
the uh, that sensor reads the light dark light dark light dark and that's how it works your traction control and ABS and various various I maybe even the speedometer who knows I don't know I don't know enough about electronics I don't need to know I need to know how to put tires on today this will be the next step and then I will move on to the discs always small details I'm just running the heads of the bolts on a buffing wheel just to clean them up a little bit and it's all these little details that when you're all done, nobody, nobody notices any one of them. They notice them all at the same time. Now, I'm really not sure how, how this, the, the electronics of this bike work. I'm, I know the newer bike, the newer model, has more advanced traction control, but this one has good traction control. <laughs> you can tell. I haven't crashed yet, <laughs> but I've got to keep my mouth shut. But... I've, I've gotten spoiled with the traction control and the ABS on this bike, and I've used them both in the time that I've had it, and they've been wonderful. And I have to give Jose credit. For many years, he was trying to talk me into bikes with ABS and traction control and stuff, and I always kind of poo-pooed it, but in the end, I think he was right. And, of course, all the screws in here, I have my good torque wrench. And I have had this guy for many, many years, and he's pretty accurate. It's a craftsman. I had the the one from Harbor Freight, and it did. It reads pretty much the same, but I always trust. I always trust this one. I don't know why. I think the reason those bolts were locked tight in, and they were so tight when I went to take it apart, is because that's a that's probably a, a classified as a safety feature. In fact, I know it is, of the motorcycle. Okay, we're ready to mount the discs. I've already cleaned them and basically cleaned the buttons. Brake parts cleaner. Got them clean, and I do have one marked for which one goes on the right side with the engraving tool. And it's the most important thing anytime you have the discs off the bike to clean the buttons. Totally clean the buttons. When they freeze up, then you get that crazy lever pumping. I marked which one goes on the gas side, and this is the one I need to use. Now, I wanted to take the bolts. I want to polish the ends just a little bit. And these did have blue Loctite on them. Thank God Yamaha didn't put that red, red Loctite. I want to polish these up, and we'll be ready to torque these down. And then flip it through the other disc, and we're really going to balance the wheel. More little details, and every time I have one more little detail I've cleaned up or added or polished or made nice, I... I know people notice this, and sometimes you don't even know you notice it, but believe me, you know. I was starting to come down the home stretch, and this is when it starts to really get exciting. We're going to see this wheel for the first time all put together, and this, I, I think, for the life of the motorcycle, is going to be easy to maintain. It's going to be just one wipe, and it's done, unlike some of the flat finishes that you've got to, if you don't wipe them every time you use it, they, they get really high maintenance. This is going to be a very low maintenance wheel. I'm torquing down the disc in a star pattern, the same way you would torque down the head of an engine. Always a good idea, and at the very end, of course, check everything with the torque wrench to the factory spec. Now, now that this wheel is in, all in one piece, I needed to take a couple looks at it from a couple different angles. I was really impressed, and I really, I was really happy the way this played out. I could not have been happier with the way eight days of work went and the result. And the last thing, I took some brake part cleaner, cleaned up the disc on both sides, made sure the screws are torqued down and in a star pattern. I'll do the other side off camera and we are in great shape. We'll be ready to balance the wheel. Now once I button up and torque down the back side, both of the discs are on. I need to clean this real good with brake parts cleaner. Get this all cleaned up. I don't want any any fingerprints even on those discs. That is really not. That is ready to mount on a motorcycle. Now another small little thing that I do is I keep all my tire changing, mounting stuff. This is the weight that we don't need. This is the way it came off the MT09. Another thing worth mentioning. I was thinking I might need stick-on weights, and if you do use these, put a piece of duct tape or gorilla tape or something around it. When these come off and you're going at speed. Somebody behind you can lose a tooth. It's true. So I wanted to just show whatever information I could on this video and make it 
simple and enjoyable and something practical if you want to change your own tires or you want to do a custom rim. Now right from the beginning of this project from the custom mixed paint to that experimental thing I did with the 4 to 1 paint, it's been uh, 8 days of working on this wheel and probably be 8 days for the rear wheel. Well, I, I just couldn't be happier the way this came out and tomorrow we'll mount it up and I, if, if it isn't snowing, we'll get some pictures of how it looks. And we're going to try, if we do get some paintable days, work on Luciano's uh, ZX7R gas tank. But right now the primary thing I want to do is get the both wheels finished as time is available. Now I was going to try to add to the end of this video the Baja No Pinch tire installation tool which is on my channel you put my name in quotation marks and Baja no pinch tool for tire mounting and that might be nice if you want to see another way to do it but this way has always worked pretty well for me and for other people and I do mount a lot of tires if you ride a lot you learn how to mount tires that's for sure Now, truth in advertising, these Michelin 5s, I was doing a test. I'm in the middle of doing a test right now for mileage. I, they look like they're wearing very well. They are soft tires, though. You, in the middle of the summer, I took the durometer out, and I was measuring them against other brands of tires. They're soft. They're super grippy, and it seems like they last long on the MT-09. We're going to find out because halfway through the test, I'm going to mount them up on one of the other bikes. Anyway... Good information on the video. I try not to leave out any steps. I try to be meticulous about passing on good, high-quality information that's usable, not pie-in-the-sky stuff. Real down-to-earth stuff you can use if you're a backyard mechanic to work on your motorcycle. We send the video out every day. Thanks for watching.